What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today I'm going to be showing you guys the process of taking a clay casted life cast. We're going to make a silicon mold of it and then we're going to make translucent resin castings. If you guys are thinking this piece looks familiar, well it was in my previous video. This is actually the final production form of my left handed Michael Myers hand as it appears in the end of the latest Halloween film. So this is going towards my life-size display. I do have my personal copy, but this piece here is for production. I do want to offer these to the public as additions to their life-size Michael Myers displays or hell, even they can grip it and have it under their coveralls and have it as a display piece for their costume. So the process of getting to this stage was taking a mold of my dad's hand and that was done by dunking his hand in alginate. Now, if you guys have seen one of the Mr. Whippy episodes where I had a mold taken of my teeth for the grills by the amazing Dave Woodruff, we used alginate for that. It takes about three minutes to set. It's seaweed based, it's non-toxic and it's very easy to use. You know, you just pour some water in, mix it up till you get that desired consistency dunked dad's hand in and then waited three minutes, pulled it out, and then we got monster clay from Monster Makers. And this is a clay that you can actually melt down in a pot and pour in the mold, crack the mold open, and this is the end result. So I have gone in and cleaned up all the details, just made sure everything's nice and neat. Now, if you're wondering why I don't have all the gore and the, you know, the blast effect sculpted in here. Well, that actually comes into when we have the translucent resin casting and I go in with the little Dremel bits. So I'm not worrying about that detail for now. That's going to matter when the resin castings are ready to go. So like I said, this sculpture is all ready to go. So the first step is we have to make a silicon glove mold. I'm going to be using pinky seal, which I've been using for the longest time. It's easy to use, very user friendly. Um, I get it from Barnes here in Australia. So the mix ratio is one to one. I'm probably going to do about 10 brush on coats. Now, usually I could use pinky seal odd bod, which was actually a little collaboration with Odd Studios and Barnes. It's a much more thicker pinky seal silicon, but because I want to get as even as a consistency as possible over the whole body of the mold, I am just going to be using standard pinky seal. Then after that, we're probably going to have to split this into three parts in terms of the mother mold. So I'm not going to jump to conclusions yet. I've got to wait to see how the glove mold looks once all the layers are put on, all 10 layers, and then I can gauge from there exactly how I'm going to break this bad boy up in terms of the mother mold. So with that being said, we're going to head up to the workshop, brush on 10 coats of silicon, and then move on to the mother mold. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pre-measured all of the part A's of the pinky seal silicon. So all I have to do is throw in the part B on the scale here. So Averaging about 20 grams each cup, add another 20 grams, we've got a total of 40 grams for each coat. Now, the first coat, which is called a print coat, is the most important coat of all this because it's gonna pick up all that detail. So I'm gonna be using a much finer brush as opposed to these cheap and nasty disposable brushes that are just gonna be used as a one-off because once they get silicon on them, you ain't getting it off. So we're gonna mix up our first batch and do our print coat. Okay, all eight layers of silicon have been applied. The hand is now fully dried. It's now time to clay up our dividing wall for our mother mold. So I've already started. I'm just using wet clay, which is water-based clay. Now, it's very fiddly because nothing wants to stick to silicon other than silicon. So you gotta be very strategic, very careful, and just make sure you wall it all up nicely and just be very careful when you're applying your plaster or plaster bandage. Um, so I do have some extra pieces here to kind of link everything together. So it's actually gonna be split into three parts. We're gonna have the main backing area here. We're gonna have a little side panel here 
and a part on the palm here. So it's gonna be a three piece shell because we do have a lot of undercuts here where a two piece one would just put too much strain on the sculpture and too much strain on the resin castings themselves. So once this is all done, nice and neat, I'm gonna put in some keys. Okay, we have the first clay wall all ready to go and I am actually gonna go with the Ultra Cal 30. This is the Ultra Cal 30 from Barnes. So it's a high strength gypsum powder, um, a lot stronger than just regular plaster, plaster Paris, casting plaster. So I do usually mix my batches up quite thick so I can get a lot of coverage. And if it is too thin, it's kind of gonna bead away from the silicon here. So not as much on the clay, but more so on the silicon. So I do wanna build up a nice thick consistency on the first go and just being very careful because that clay is going to want to lift off that silicon like there's no tomorrow. So I'm going to mix up my first batch and we're going to do our first layer. So the thing I love about Ultra Cal 30 is it kind of sets in stages so it is starting to harden up now but you can take a brush with some water and we can start to smooth out the mold surface because I, you know, I'm very anal about neatness of molds and it just, it makes for easier work when you're casting something up instead of having your hands get all shredded by these little pieces here. So it still gives us plenty of time to neaten everything up and then it'll start to heat up because this is how this stuff cures. It, it sets on heat and then we can start to apply our second and last layer for this panel. All we need is two layers because this stuff is quite robust. As I mentioned before, is that it's a gypsum stone, so it's gonna make for a very, very strong mold casing. Okay, as you see right here, I've clayed up the second dividing wall. So we're gonna be plastering up this area here. And then like the previous process, once the plaster has cured, I'll strip away this clay wall here and we have our final wall to build up here. So after this stage, there is no more clay required, thank goodness, because it's just such a pain in the butt trying to mount this on silicon, like I said, because nothing wants to stick to silicon but silicon. So we're gonna repeat the process with some more Ultra Cal 32 layers on this area. Now it's imperative that we uh, apply some petroleum jelly on the plaster portion of the dividing wall. Otherwise, the uh, plaster will completely seal up on each other and we will not be able to release this. Okay, so we are on the final lap of doing the mother mold of this piece, guys. So everything has been cleaned, prepped. I've uh, done the release with the petroleum jelly. So all that's left is the exact two stages that we've just covered. And then we can crack this bad boy open once the Ultra Cal 30 has fully cured. All right, geeks, the mother mold is fully cured, fully completed. I let this baby sit overnight. Granted, you know, I could have probably demolded it an hour later after I applied the final panel, but it was pretty late at night and we still do have to go in with an angle grinder and angle grind all the edges here to make them all nice and neat. And that is also gonna help 
the mother mold actually release and crack away. So I did put a little skewer in the plaster here while it was still curing as a little area that we can tap some wooden pieces into to release it because it is all airtight at the moment. Once you have that release, um, it, it is pretty straightforward from there. So obviously we've got the one, two, three pieces that need to come apart. I'm also gonna cleanly cut the silicon away here with a Stanley knife and then we can peel the glove mold off and we can finally get to the fun stuff. Not to say this isn't fun, but you know, the fun nitty gritty stuff and that's uh, tinting our special translucent resin and making a really nice translucent resin copy of this Michael Myers hand. Now, when cracking the actual mold open, you wanna try your best to use either paddle pop sticks, or in this case, I've got little barbecue skewers here because most times out of 10, if you do use, say, a flathead screwdriver, it can actually damage the inside of the mold and it could actually crack parts of the wall a lot more. So, the trick is just take your time when opening the mold up and eventually you get to that part where everything just wants to release and lift off and then you can take all of the appropriate pieces off. Now, in order to make this glove mold peel off with ease, I'm just going over the entire piece with petroleum jelly. And the more castings you do, uh, the more you do want to kind of, you know, update it with a little bit more petroleum jelly here and there. It's just going to make the demolding your castings a lot more easier. And the petroleum jelly doesn't affect the silicon in any way, shape or form. All right, guys, the mold has been put back together. It is time to make a translucent resin casting. So the resin we're gonna be using is Bee Queen. This is from Barnes. This is a translucent resin that kind of dries almost like a champagne color, but it's actually perfect for the look I'm going for. So we're gonna be using a mixture of a skin tone pigment and a reg pigment. So the first two slush coats are gonna have just a little bit of skin tone in it because we still want that really nice transparency showing through. And then on the final two slush coats, there's gonna be a total of four slush coats. On the final two, just gonna add a bit of the cherry red just just to accentuate the pinks that are in skin tones. So before we do any of that, I'm gonna spray some J wax inside the mold. This is a awesome release age and just helps with demolding. And then we can get to it. So in terms of batch sizes, I'm probably gonna go for about, let's say 30 or 40 grams each batch. You don't need much. There is not a lot of surface to cover inside the mold there. So after that, we're then gonna foam fill it with some R foam and I will show you guys the process of that. But firstly, Let's get to the slush coats. So it's only been a few minutes and we're all ready to go for the second slush coat. This is how quick 
this stuff sets, um, it's kind of hard when you're doing big molds. You've really got to act fast. In winter, it's a lot more, you know, relaxed, but in summer, you've really, really got to know what you're doing um, in terms of coverage on big surface molds. Okay, so on the third slush coat, I'm just adding a little bit of the red tint, and that is just going to add a bit of pink uh, to the underlaying parts of the cast here. Because you think about it, you look at the way your skin's layered up, and it almost has sort of a pinkish, purplish, there's a lot of stuff going on under there, guys. And obviously, everyone's skin is different. I'm kind of going for a generic kind of blank canvas look, because we are obviously going to go in with uh, an oil paint and dirty up the hands. Okay, after about half an hour, the Bee Queen is all set. It's still a bit malleable, but that is totally fine. If anything, it's gonna help the expander foam here adhere to the piece a lot more easier. So the foam we're gonna be using is R Foam 33 from Barnes. So part A, part B, mix ratio is 100 to 100. Now this stuff, you only need a little bit because it expands quite a bit. We don't have much area in there to expand upon. So I love watching this stuff work. It's gonna like bubble up and ooze up and everything. So the foam takes about half an hour to fully cure. Most foams take a couple of hours, but this stuff is very quick setting and it sets rock hard. It's not one of those soft malleable foams. So once that's done, we can demold this, clean it up. We can start to dremel in uh, the trauma on the hand and everything, paint it up. All right, geeks, I am very, very happy with the end results so far of this casting straight out of the mold. I mean, look at the fingernails there. It's just the detail it picks up and the way the tint works in terms of kind of replicating the edge and ends of nails. It's just, it's unbelievable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up this area here. We're gonna get rid of this excess foam, get rid of this excess resin, make it all nice and flat. And then we're gonna go in with a Dremel and I'm gonna mark out where I want the trauma to be exactly. And we're gonna grind down with the Dremel bit down till we get to the foam. And that foam is actually gonna emulate bone, like bone marrow that's kind of been left as like a bloody stump after the fingers have been blasted away. Remember how I told you guys that that foam would come in handy? So now that all the dremeling is done, you can see that that foam is great at emulating sort of like bone marrow and blasted away fragments and everything. So I've given the whole thing a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any dust particles that are in the crevices of the actual hand. Now, the next step is painting, weathering, blooding, everything just finalizing this piece and just making it look disgusting and gnarly. So before we do any painting, we have to prime it. And because we want to keep this base color, we're going to use a clear primer, just the Duramax plastic primer, which is clear. We're then going to go over with a flesh tone, a light flesh tone from Model Masters. This is an acrylic paint. I'm actually going to dry brush it over the entire hand first, just to pick up and highlight the wrinkles. And then I'm gonna very, very carefully paint the tips of the nails and just kind of blend it in with my fingers till I meet that happy medium. And what I love here is that uh, the casting has actually picked up the chip nails here, which is gonna look great when we dirty the whole hand up.
Okay, now that we've done the dry brushing and the detail on the fingernails, it's time to go in and really dirty this hand up. This is a Michael Myers hand after all. And we, we know that James Hugh Courtney's hands in the film are quite grimy and dirty, and there's like dried blood on the fingertips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with some oil-based raw umber. This is uh, oil color, so it is great for highlighting and doing grime for weathering on whether it be fabric or resin pieces, providing that the resin piece is properly primed. So I'm gonna go in with this piece all over, especially with a fine brush under the nails, just to emulate dirt under the nails, especially the cracked and chipped areas, highlighting the uh, the perimeter of the nails as well. I'm also gonna go in with some raw umber and mix some red spray paint together and put that on the fingertips. Once that's complete and I'm, I've reached that happy medium, we can then go in and start the gore effects here and wrap this piece up. Now I've actually gone ahead and mixed up some more Bee Queen, but this time with a full resin tint. Now I'm gonna utilize the fact that as this stuff gels, it coagulates and gets quite tenacious and sticky, and I'm gonna take advantage of that on the hand itself right now, just to add extra gunge, extra goo, and just make it all nice and chunky and disgusting. So thanks very much for watching guys. Absolutely and utterly over the moon with how this prop hand has turned out. Now, if you look right beside me, this is my life-size Michael Myers that I'm currently working on that I will eventually be doing a video on once he is fully completed. So, this is my personal copy right here. This is the prototype. It needs a bit more weathering on the hand as opposed to the one from the video, but it does have the lock-in mechanism for the mannequin hand itself. So it's just a matter. And there we go. He's good to go. Now guys, if you do want to purchase this hand, it is available for sale on my Etsy store. I will leave the link down below. So with that being said, guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. <laughs>